Clay Soil to Gold, the no-till Ruth Stout hack that transforms dead dirt forever. Imagine turning the hardest, most compacted clay soil into rich, dark, crumbly earth without ever picking up a tiller. Sounds impossible? Stay with me, because by the end of this video you'll know exactly how to transform heavy clay soil using a modified version of the Ruth Stout no-till deep mulch method, a system that works with nature instead of against it. The root problem, clay soil that fights back. Clay soil is the ultimate gardener's challenge. At first glance, the top few inches may seem decent. It might even look fertile, but dig just a few inches deeper and you hit a dense, heavy layer that feels more like modeling clay than soil. When it's wet, it's sticky and suffocating. When it's dry, it turns to concrete. Roots can't penetrate it easily, water struggles to drain, and oxygen is almost non-existent below the surface. Many gardeners try to fix this by tilling, thinking that breaking up the clay will aerate it and make it more workable. The problem? Tilling actually makes clay soil worse over time. Once it rains and dries again, those broken up clods compact even harder than before, and the beneficial microbial life that could have helped fix the problem gets destroyed in the process. The truth is simple. You can't fix clay soil with tilling. The only lasting way to change its structure is by adding massive amounts of organic matter and letting nature rebuild the soil from the top down. That's where the Ruth Stout method comes in. So, why does the Ruth Stout method work so well? Ruth Stout's no-till deep mulch system revolutionized the way many gardeners think about soil. Her approach is simple layer organic materials, usually hay or straw, directly on top of the ground and let them break down naturally over time. But in clay soil, we can't just copy the method as is. We have to adapt it to jumpstart biological activity deep beneath the surface. This means we're not just feeding the plants. We're feeding the worms, fungi, and microbes that will gradually aerate and rebuild the soil structure for us. Clay soil's biggest weakness is compaction, and its biggest ally is life. The more living organisms we can attract to the soil, the faster it transforms. That's why this adapted method focuses first on feeding the soil life, not the plants. Step 1 is choosing and preparing the area. Start by mowing or cutting down any existing vegetation in the area you want to improve. Don't till it. Don't even disturb the soil structure. Let the roots of weeds and grasses stay where they are. They'll decompose naturally and become organic matter in the months to come. For reference, the test area I used was roughly 20 feet long and 15 feet wide, a decent section to measure progress over time. It's important that this area hasn't been heavily amended before, so you can clearly see how much the method improves the soil. Step two is what I like to call the power layer, adding manure. Here's where this version of the method departs from the original. Before applying hay, I lay down a generous layer of aged manure. This could be pig, cow, horse, or chicken manure, but it must be spread thick enough to feed the underground ecosystem all winter long. For a 20 by 15 foot plot, I used six wheelbarrow loads of aged pig manure. Spread it as evenly as you can, but don't worry if the layer isn't perfectly uniform. Small variations help create microzones of heat and microbial diversity. If you're using fresh manure instead of aged, that's fine too, as long as you're doing this at least six months before planting. That gives it time to break down and mellow out. In cooler climates, the decomposition will continue slowly through the winter, providing warmth and nutrients just beneath the mulch. If your manure is dry, moisten it lightly before spreading. Use a dilution of one part water to three parts manure to achieve a consistency similar to thick mud. This moisture helps activate microbial life more quickly and jumpstart the breakdown process. This manure layer acts like a bridge between the mulch above and the clay below. 
As earthworms move upward to feed on it, they'll pull organic matter deeper into the clay, leaving behind tunnels that permanently loosen and aerate the soil. Step 3 is the deep mulch layer. Once the manure is down, it's time for the mulch, the defining feature of the Ruth Stout method. Hay or straw both work beautifully, but the key here is depth. For clay soil, you need at least 10 to 12 inches of hay over the top. Spread it thick and fluffy. You want it loose enough that air can move through, but dense enough to block sunlight and suppress weeds. As the hay decomposes, it will settle, so don't be afraid to pile it high in the beginning. This thick layer serves multiple purposes at once. It protects the soil from erosion, regulates temperature, conserves moisture, and most importantly, it provides a slow, steady food source for decomposers. The contact points between hay and manure become biological hotspots, warm, nutrient-rich areas, where bacteria and fungi thrive all winter long. If your hay is very dry, lightly dampen it after spreading with plain water to speed up microbial activation. For a 20 by 15 foot section, about 10 gallons of water distributed evenly will do the job. All right, so over the next several months, you'll notice the hay starting to compress and break down. As that happens, the gases and heat from decomposition will actually create a little microclimate, keeping worms and microbes active even when the weather gets cooler. Now, to keep this whole process moving along, just add fresh layers of hay whenever you see a lot of settling. You can also, you know, sprinkle in some light layers of chicken manure or maybe composted kitchen scraps throughout the winter. These little additions help keep the microbial life well-fed and make sure there's a steady cycle of nutrients moving between the mulch and the clay underneath. If you're looking to speed things up a bit, you can mix up a microbial booster tea. Just use one gallon of water, two cups of aged compost, and one tablespoon of unsulfured molasses. Give it a good stir. Let it sit for about 24 hours, then pour it evenly over the mulch surface. This will feed all those beneficial bacteria and help balance out the carbon-rich hay with some nitrogen inputs. Step 5. What to expect and when. This isn't a quick fix, and honestly, that's exactly why it works. The first year, you may not see dramatic results. The soil beneath is still transitioning, and a lot of those nutrients are locked up in the decomposition process. But by the second year, you'll notice something remarkable. The soil will be darker, looser, and just so much easier to dig into. Earthworms will be everywhere. And by the third year, you'll likely have a completely different soil profile, rich, aerated, and absolutely full of organic life. During the first season, plant shallow-rooted or hardy crops like potatoes, beans, or squash. These crops tolerate heavy soils and help condition the bed even further as their roots push through the upper layers. Why does this work so well for clay? Well, what's happening beneath the surface is kind of a quiet miracle. The manure and mulch feed billions of microbes that digest organic matter and release these sticky compounds that bind clay particles into larger aggregates. These aggregates create pore spaces, allowing oxygen, moisture, and roots to penetrate where once there was nothing but dense clay. Worms act as natural tillers, really replacing the need for mechanical tools entirely. Every tunnel they create improves drainage and aeration while depositing nutrient-rich castings. Over time, your once stubborn clay soil transforms into living, breathing earth. Here's the takeaway. Adapting the Ruth Stout method for clay soil isn't just about growing plants. It's about rebuilding the soil itself. By layering manure and hay, keeping it moist, and letting time and biology do the work, you can permanently shift your soil structure without ever using a tiller or heavy equipment. So if your garden feels more like a brick pit than a planting bed, don't fight it. Feed it. Give it the organic matter it craves, protect it under mulch, and just let nature take over. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe to Soil and Crops Central, hit the like button, and share it with anyone struggling with clay soil. Together, we're turning hard ground into fertile earth, one bed at a time.